Uh oh, I think I already started it. You're live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that started quickly, didn't it? <laughs> How are we so, so, so shambolic at this, even after all this time? Because it's a pain. Uh, Matty's there. Woohoo! See, okay. everyone's there. See. I, I'm literally just putting something on Instagram right now. There you go. Look, I did it. I didn't stuff it up at all. Anyway, hello, Matty. It's just the three of us at the moment. Uh, oh no, Craig is back. Craig, you are familiar and um, nice to see you. And hang on a minute. We have loads of people. Christ, you're here quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so sorry. Once again, I completely stuffed this up. I, so, I'm just in the middle of letting people on Instagram know that we're here, so excuse me. So good I'm morning, saying. good afternoon from us. Um, we have just come live from Patreon, so that was very good. Um, Apologies if you look in the background, you'll see the boat going up and down like this. It you is that thing. no, I like if you want to see that we're actually properly at sea. Um, it is rough as old boots, and it really is rough here. Um, in this marina, it's it's been blowing 30 to 40 knots for the last two days, really. Mm. Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, it's it's really it's really so pretty grim. That's so it is, it is it is pretty bloody grim. So, um Leo, so some hellos. Um, Teresa's going to look at all the all the messages down there. So if she's looking down a lot today, it is I'm because... I'm going to try not to do that too much. No. Um, so we will say some hellos. I have uh, my first my first Easter egg of uh, of the year. So there you go. There's my little Easter egg. It looks a lot like a tin of, of beer. Uh, because it is. Uh, <laughs> because after a while, you can't just eat chocolate. So there you go. So hello to everybody. Um, well, ironically, we said let's not get Easter eggs or chocolate because we're trying to be healthy, and then we're just like, oh, but it's Easter. Let's just have a beer. There you go. There you go. Okay, I'm with you. We've let everyone on Instagram know that we're here, and um, you've got to read some questions, thing. Okay. All right. So hello to everyone. First of all, um, how many people are watching? Ninety already. Ninety. Woo well, Glenn is in. Uh, Glenn, are you are you out drinking at one in the morning? Hey, and Christy's here. Or well, maybe Glenn's um like at work or something, doing shift work. Glenn, or... are you are you drinking? Are you just rolling yourself home and trying to creep in the creep in the back door before you get rumbled? Um. Okay, so let's say 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 some hellos. Hello to Ben. Hello to Christy. Um. Hello to G Wiz, which is an excellent name. Um, Christy, hello... safe flight. She's just getting on the plane. Just say goodbye to everyone. Say goodbye to Christy. She's getting on her plane. Okay. <laughs> See you, Christy. Um, hello again to Dan. Hello, uh, Kenny. Hello, Ben. Okay. So, hello, Matt. Alrighty. So, uh, Ben has jumped right into some questions. And um, as always, we encourage you to uh, ask your questions, ask any question that comes to mind. There's very little that's off limits with us, but um, if you find that we don't answer your question, then We've just missed it because sometimes it can be a little bit hard to keep up. So just ask, ask it again and at some point we'll see it. So um, Ben asked where we get our music from, which is a very easy answer, which is um, Epidemic Sound. Yes. All of our music is from <clears throat> Epidemic Sound. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Um, <clears throat> and there's there's like hundreds of thousands of tracks on there, but you still have to choose them. You do have to still choose oh, the yeah, tracks. Yeah, you know, yeah. You've got to go and we spend a lot of time doing that. Yeah. Um, you need to do some more hellos from your phone. I think. I know. Oh, okay. Um, other questions? Um... Someone says, what are your favourite seas to travel? I actually like the inland sea of Abaco. It's easy sailing. <laughs> and someone has just said, Mr. Mr. Juan's World, uh, he's going to Hope Town on Tuesday. Go to the Hope Town coffee shop and say hello to the surfer that runs the place. He's a really nice bloke. Uh, so, yes, Hope Town coffee shop. Sit there, have an over-expensive iced latte and um, a lovely slice of quiche and kick back and go, this is the rest of our lives. There you go. Okay, so uh, are we saying hellos? So trust in a girl. Yes, sorry, are you hitting me? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. sorry, I thought you were hitting me. No, are we sorry. saying hellos? Yes, say some hellos. Okay, so um, Leo, hello from Fort Lauderdale. Um, Alex, hello to Alex, hello to Alan, hello to Jonathan and Bob and oh. Michael and James and Carl and Jenny, hello you two in Greece. Um, hello to Wayne. From um, Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas. That's from like a film. Wizard of Oz, babe. Yes. 
This okay. is how we do Thank geography you. on Ruby Rose. <laughs> there was a line in a film about that once. <laughs> um, hello to Lewis and Tim, The Sea Venture, uh, which is Ron and Bev, just back from Bahamas. Oh, lovely. Um, Lance, Jackie, Brad. Brad. Okay, so someone said, who did my tattoo? A girl called Betsy Wetz. At the, uh, yeah, she's called. The, uh, oh, what's the name of the tattoo parlor? Tattoo, no, the, the tattoo. Gilded. Gilded Mermaid. Mermaid in Gild Charleston. Yeah, Gilded Mermaid. She's a, she's actually a Star Wars tattoo. If you look her up on Instagram, it's called, I think she's at Betsy Wetz, and it's B E T S Y W E T S, Betsy yeah, Wetz. Betsy. If you didn't catch that, just watch it on the review. Uh, what? <laughs> uh. <laughs> So I just missed a few. There's so many questions come screaming through. Um, so let's have a little look. Strong wind. So yes, Carl and Jenny sailing. They've got strong wind too. The a lot of the med, a lot of the Mediterranean at the moment is kind of beset with fairly high winds. Yeah. Um, yes. We have uh, about three or four days in a row of I think probably between thirty and forty knots. Yep. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> it, it kind of dies off a little bit overnight. Uh, but it doesn't really make much difference because there's still so much swell, and so we get a bit of swell in the marina, irrespective of the wind situation. So, oh well, it is what it is. Alan says, my wife says this is the modern day romper room show. I don't even know what the modern day romper room show is, but I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> no, and someone who keeps sending hearts to us says, trust in a girl, uh, says, would you rather live on a boat or on land? I would rather live on a boat. That's why we live on a boat. That's why we live on a boat. Yeah, this isn't because of like, we, we, we stuffed our lives up. <laughs> This is, we, we chose this. We're here by choice. Which is for this. Um, so let's move on to some news. Um, Jackie Nation um, is probably ask, asking a question um, that everyone's going to ask, which is, um, how's the catamaran research going? Well, um, it actually, well, Ruby Rose 2 research starts in earnest on Thursday. Yes. And the reason it starts on Thursday, it's not I've just put some spurious date in my calendar, um, we are heading off to the Grand Mop Boat Show on Thursday, and that means that we are going to go, and it's a specific catamaran boat show, and we're going <coughs> to start our research of catamarans there. Um, there's a lot there, and it's a bit more laid back than regular boat shows. Um, they don't show all the brands of catamarans, and although we are not 100% or that we're going to get a catamaran, I think we have... Almost 100%, well, we've decided that this will probably be the last season we sell Ruby Rose 1. Yes, yes. So um, this will be um, our last sailing season on board at Southerly 38. Well, it may be. If no one buys her, she doesn't sell we, when we plan, decide to sell okay, her. Apart from kind of listing all the possible contingencies, yes. we plan for this to be the last year on board River, uh, at Southerly 38, which is an amazingly beautiful boat, but... Possibly not well suited to our next the next phase of our lives and our plans. <clears throat> so um, yes, we're as you probably already know, uh, we are looking for the next boat, and we're thinking that will probably be a catamaran. Definitely not one hundred percent certain of that, but that's the direction we're leaning at the moment. And we are to answer Adam's question. We are going to the Grand Mot Boat Show, which is a catamaran boat show in France, on next Thursday and Friday. We'll be there Thursday, Friday. We'll be there Thursday, Friday. <coughs> So um, if any of you are there, then please yeah, don't yeah, say hello. Nice. Um, segue to the picture says, I'm disabled. How easy is it to have this life? We actually were talking to a, a boat manufacturer who has built a boat, a catamaran, for a wheelchair user. And so it's it's completely set up. And, you know, the galley's been modified. The the actual, um, it's actually got a like a platform that comes down the side for letting a wheelchair on. Yeah. It can be done. So can However, it's not cheap. There you go. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's, uh, yes. There you go. So it can be done. Um, so B Sander says, how many days will we be in Annapolis for and are any of the meetups being planned? Um, we are going to be in Annapolis for most of the boat show because we've got a lot of things to see, a lot of people to talk about. Um, a lot of people to talk about. No, sorry, a lot of, thi lot of, thi lot of people to talk to. Yes. Because um, we really are looking for a new boat. So it's not just me turning up, drinking so much beer and then being dragged home by Teresa. Um, Which is traditionally how we do with boat shows. There will be some sort of meetups. The precise format, we don't know. We will let you all know in good time. So that's 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 the way it's going to be. I can't tell you any more than that. 
Um, we have booked our accommodation off Annapolis, so we've kind of got something sorted and we'll get flights. Jeremy wants to know, can you do a technical Tuesday on celestial navigation, please? I can't. I can't. <laughs> I, I don't have it. I can't. I have no sextant and I, I, I've never done any celestial navigation, so I can't. Um, so that's a no. No. Yeah, that's a, another that, way of saying that. That's no. a no. Okay. Um, sorry. Already I'm losing track of all the questions. Um, What's our favourite location in the Caribbean? asks Wayne. Martinique. Yeah. I don't know, that's a really tough one because I feel like all the islands really uh, provide something very different. Um, but I really like the BBIs. I really love the BBIs. I think what made the BBIs, well, the BBIs is fantastic, but it also, um, we met some really amazing people in the BBIs. Yeah, we did, we did. And the BBIs is very easy because you don't have to really think about sailing, you just, kind of potter around all the anchorages are so close to each other so it was very yes. easy sailing. it was like a nice little break I yep. feel like I feel like the BBLs is like a holiday <laughs> it was, it was a, a holiday it, from our there was a lot nice. of drinking going on there yeah uh, Christoph says catamaran or monohull more than likely Ruby Rose 2 is going to be a catamaran again we are looking into this we are going to start our research in earnest and if you didn't catch the last comment this will probably although not 100% be the last season we spend on this Ruby Rose so we will we will get up for sale and uh Move on. We've got some good questions here. So, amazing questions. Yeah, um, I'm going to go and get another beer because I'm getting a bit hoarse. You yeah. can with the questions. Can you get me one, please? Yes. Um, Sim? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll answer Tony's question, which is, what recommendations can you give to convince my wife to set sail and cruise? I'll get naked if she does. <laughs> there you go. What more could you want a sort of middle-aged... Uh, people, people don't need that no incentive that in their mind no all right no, no. think i mean maybe but no um okay are you particularly excitable tonight i feel like you're kind of like really overly hyperactive even for you um okay tony to answer your question um that's a really tough one to sell all and cruise i don't know whether selling all and going cruising is the best option so I, you know that's something that is definitely a joint decision um not you know just a decision for one of you uh that's a huge lifestyle change and um babe bit of clanging that's uh oh did you not have a cold one in there no there's no more beer left ah that's no wonder you <laughs> were getting really restless <laughs> yeah um, okay, so yeah, that's something that obviously the two of you have to decide together. Um, but what I would say is that to start the process, it might be obviously if she already sails, then she probably already knows whether it's something she wants to do. If she doesn't already sail, then uh, take a sailing and try and take a sailing for the first time, at least somewhere lovely. And um, you know, don't scare her off by kind of you know taking her out in really rough conditions or anything like that. If you can then think about doing a charter somewhere lovely um to really kind of give her the, the buzz and um yeah you know show her youtube there's plenty of inspiration on youtube in all fairness if she's really unsure about this i think a good week catamaran sailing in the bvi is, is difficult to beat uh if yeah. you if you're not used to boats yeah. it doesn't heal um keith says besides Sutherlies, are there any other swing keel makers i'm not sure there are any other swing keels there's lift keel makers yeah. but not swing keel i think Sutherlies has the, the um, patent on that doesn't it it owns the ipr yeah. on that swing keel and although it's a subtle difference swing keels mean that you can hit something and you don't take the keel off the swing the king just the, yeah well the keel does swing it swing up exactly as it sounds rather than uh, lifts up Robert says, where are you going to list her? We will probably list her with North Shore and we will probably sell her in the, privately as well. Um, so, Robert, if you want to buy Ruby Rose, let us know. If you don't, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so, a couple more questions. So, so Win M, so, no, why did you touch it? Uh, you why know that, would you, you touch know it? That you know what it's like. Um, do you remember the question? Or do you yes, someone, it was Win M says, do you have something picked out? Uh -huh. um, no, we don't. I oh, promise I'm you. sorry. There is absolutely no, we don't have another boat picked out. There, we're literally, we're kind of, we're going into this with a really, really kind of, in a, in a, in a, a clean slate. We literally don't know what we want. Yeah, we're, we're trying to keep an open mind. I think that when we bought uh, our Southerly 38, um, first of all, I wasn't particularly involved. I really had only just started sailing and um, I wasn't, I, you know, 
I remember coming on board at the Southampton Boat Show, like coming downstairs here and looking around and talking about like the kitchen. And I was like, oh, look at the bathroom, look at the bedrooms. And Nick's like, please stop talking because you don't, you sound like you don't know what you're talking about, which I didn't. So, um, yeah, now it's very much a joint decision. Whereas before, I feel like it was Nick's decision that I was kind of going along with. Yeah. So we're trying to keep an open mind. We both have, I think, the same idea of what it is that we want in our next boat and um, it's just a matter of finding it. Exactly. Alan says, is it easy to get a guest slip in the med? Um, thus far it is, but apparently July and August are horrendous, which is why we're going into the Atlantic from then. Dan, um, Dan says, um, what have been your best and worst experiences baking bread underway? I don't think we've had any bad experience. Oh, you, hang on, that's a lie. You killed your sourdough like 10 days in a row. Yeah, well, my sourdough, yeah, I'm, I'm a really bad sourdough mummy, it turns out. But, um, no, I remember on the first Atlantic crossing, I don't know if you remember this, hopefully you don't, but maybe you do, is I tried to make, um, it wasn't bread, but it was in the bread machine, I tried to make lemon cake. I have no recollection of this. Yeah. What happened? Oh, it was awful. The recipe was really weird. I had, like, a baking book on board, mm. and it had a recipe, and it was, like, Five cups of flour and two eggs, and that was it. I was like, that it's was... Like an episode of Friends where they make a beef trifle because the pages are together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it, it was awful. It was terrible. So that, yeah. Uh, I blame the recipe for that. So someone says, uh, Leopard 45. I don't think it's going to be a Leopard 45. I really like the old Leopards. I don't like that forward-facing cockpit. We intend to do some really serious uh, seafaring with it. And while a Leopard 45 is perfect for kind of bumming around... Um, the older leopards, yes. Uh, the newer leopards, no. Not so much. No. I don't think so. But never say never. We'll kind of have a little look. Uh, yes. Okay. Hey, Rob's back. Hello, Rob. Um, there we go. Um, okay, Ken asks about the price on Ruby Rose. We are taking the price uh, on advice from North Shore. North Shore are the builders who build Southerlies or built Southerlies. So they have their, their brokerage. They specialise in southern leaves. We will take advice from them about what... Well, we know what it's going to be. We know, we know what it's going to be, but we'll... If you want to know, just let us know, but it's, yeah. not, it's, it's not the same as a Benetton. Look, if you, if you know the market and you are interested in southern leaves, you probably already have an idea of what the price mm -hmm. will be. So, um, if you don't know the market, then... <laughs> then hold on to your hats. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down when you look at it. Yeah. Um, okay. So... How long is the monohull you have right now? It's 38 foot. No, she's not 38 foot. You stop saying she's 41 foot. Length to length. She's a suddenly 38. She's 40 foot 8 inches. Nick's very preoccupied with length. <clears throat> Damn straight. <laughs> Every inch counts, my love. Yes, I, I, I fed you that line, obviously. Um, Danuka says, have I ever been concerned about my safety? No, never. No, this boat. No, and that's why we love this boat, because mm. you know, she is so solidly built. Yeah. Uh, Paul says the Allures is a swing keel. I thought the Allures was a lift keel. Convince me I'm wrong. I'm not sure about that. Uh, Richard says, what do I think about catches? I love catches. I think it gives you an additional sail plan, um, which is pretty good. Plus they look so pretty when they're sailing. Yes. Uh, Bubba Gale says, Nick, have you y'all checked any of the new wider beam monos? Wider this is beam. a pretty wide this is four, beam. This is four metres, mate. Yeah. So. We have an extremely, I mean, yeah, four metres by 12 metres is now. So that's quite big. Um, okay. Kenny says, I believe your time with the winds has made your mind up. Um, uh, it, it's focused us more and it's made us realise the quality uh, you, you get from being at anchor on a catamaran. Mm. So that is it. But sailing, you're never going to beat a monohull. You are never going to get beat the sailing ability of this boat. Um, uh, just for the people asking about like this boat, about the price and the specs and all that, we if you follow us on social media, like if you follow us on Facebook, then that's the best way of being up. I'm not trying to plug our social media pages, but it really is the best way of being up to date with all of our announcements. Mm -hmm. So we will share the links to the listing when, you know, when that happens, which will be soon. So if you really are interested, then um, uh, follow us on Facebook. So Broncos Guru says, my wife and I take power boats and jet skis to the Bahamas every year for a few weeks. How big a lifestyle change would it be Would it be to buy a sailboat and do it that way? Uh, I don't really know, my friend. I don't really know. It's, it's, it's far more laid back this way. 
you know, sailboats force you to do things slowly. Mm. Um, so yes, I think you know, but you could do it both ways. There you go. Uh, what else have we got? Oh, what other questions have we got? Another what are your favourite meal plans while underway? Tortilla. <laughs> Nick's become completely obsessed with tortilla. Tortilla. For those of you who don't know, it's not the American tortilla. It is a Spanish tortilla, which is yeah. like layered it's like a potato. Frittata. It's like layered potatoes yeah. covered in egg and baked. So it's like a potato omelette. It's delicious. Yeah, it's like a potato omelette. So James Walker says Saba 50. So Saba 50, then there's Asteria. So 50, I think, is too big for us. Um... Then there's, in the Fonte Pajon range, there's the Asteria, Lucia 40, the Asteria 42, Helia 44 discontinued, 45, no one knows what it's called, Sayona 47, and Saba 50. Blimey. I'm impressed that you remembered all that. I, that I, I'm like top trumps when it comes to boats. I can tell you a lot about boats. It's what I do. I shall woo you later with this. Anyway. And yet you forget so many other important things. <laughs> the problem that I have with Fontaine Pajos, um, and I'm not, I'm not excluding, I'm not knocking anyone, is that all the newer ones that we have seen, some of the build quality is really, to my mind, and it's only my opinion, not necessarily the opinion of anyone else but from me, is, is, is questionable. I wouldn't even say that that is a subjective thing. Like, I I don't think that you could walk around... I don't want an irate Frenchman sending us a cease and desist letter, us slagging off their, their brand. Okay, when we go to the Grand Mott next week, we will film whatever Fonte Pajos they have. Yes. I, I should already know this because I've been looking at what, what boats are going to be displayed there. But anyway, um, and we will show you what we mean. You can see for yourself. There are certain things that I'm like, my God, I would never. Certain things, and I will take photographs and compare them. And take I, photographs. Well, no, because it, I will take some video and yeah. show you. Because when we went to the last one, I'm like, Christ, you can't build a boat like this. Yeah. I don't mind like the cabinetry being a little bit shonky or there being like one sink or this. I'm talking about things that I would consider to be uh, a real issue with safety. Yeah, like, yeah. And, but, you know, saying that, the other view to this is that Cheeky Monkey, you know, Tasha and Ryan, when they were together, they crossed the Pacific in one. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, lots of people. I mean, um, there's, oh, God, someone's going to Out Chasing Stars. They're, they've done between Europe and I think they're in Asia somewhere at the moment. Like, Fontaine Bajos definitely are seaworthy vessels and they, they do do long distances. But, um, yeah, it, I mean, I just, no. No, we'll, we'll talk about this more in detail when we put out the boat reviews. Yeah, we, you'll see that. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to Grand Mott. The idea is, and we were talking about this on our Patreon feed before, we're going to do something, or I'm going to do something that I've not done yet, which is actually try and stick to a more rigid formula for doing this, which means that we are going to do comparative reviews. I know that a lot of other channels have done them. What's that other channel that do it a lot? Uh, uh, ch um, Cruising Off Duty. Cruising Off Duty have done it. We are going to just go and cast our, our eye over them, but we've already, because we put this out on social media about a month ago, we've already got our criteria for assessing catamarans based on what we want. Now, everyone's different. Some people want different things, but, you know, for us, build quality and safety are number one. Um, and so we're going to look at it from the point of view of a couple who aren't setting off to go and sail We've done 20,000 miles. We've covered two oceans. We know what we're looking for in a boat. Yeah. And so this is for not the first chapter, but the second chapter. So we're going to look at it from, this is up for, through, our, through our eyes. So it's going to be a series of videos, each one looking, doing walkthroughs, but assessing the things that are important to us. So that's, that's where we're going with this. Yeah, I mean, we will be making them as accessible as possible to people who are looking for different criteria. It will be like an objective review on the boat. Yep. Um, but we will obviously be giving you our opinion. Yes. Um, so yes. Um, yes, yeah, so someone says, Pierre's bird says the weather in Cornwall is fine. We've heard from all our friends in London that the weather in, in the UK is, and in Northern Europe is yeah, good. Yeah, did you see um, Lottie's Facebook post about how her Easter egg melted on the very yeah, short car journey from the supermarket? It's shocking. It's like, what the hell? And, and here it is really bad it's pissing with rain yeah. it's blowing old boots it's 35 knots and there's sea coming over the wall yeah um yeah it's not not particularly nice here today why are you doing a video inside well that's, uh, that's why that would be why uh so someone said uh tony said he sold his southerly 32 last year and bought an ammo i believe 
You've lost the comments. See, it's easy to do. I'm on 44, so I'll tell you what. Um, 54, nice. Lovely. Um, so, Flomad says, um, why, you know, essentially, the sun was perfect, except for the South Pacific. Why? Um, so, why are we changing boats? Really, this boat was built to do certain things. The boat was built to go and do an Atlantic circuit. So that's, you know, the Europe, the Mediterranean, across the Atlantic, the Caribbean, and back. And the swing kill means that we could get anywhere in the Bahamas, more shallow than catamarans can get into, uh, and we could do the French canals. The limitations of a 40-foot boat mean that there is not enough storage space and there is not enough kind of flat area on the outside to really you know, have you know, a thousand watts of solar power to have like 2000 liters of water and we want to go remotely. So we need uh, a good, we need something that can take us remotely and that's what the next boat is for. Yeah, I mean, we um, cross the Atlantic obviously in both directions on this boat and the first crossing was 3000 miles or just shy of 3000 miles. Actually, I think we did about 3000 miles, didn't we? After all the jiving and whatnot that we did. The first time? Yeah. It was about 3200 we did. Okay. Um, and so that was a three week journey for us and we averaged 6.3 knots and that was quite fast for, for us and an average of 6.3 knots over three weeks was, was pretty fast. We had, it was very windy and three weeks is really the upper limit, I believe, of what we could do comfortably on this boat in terms of storing provisions for that kind of trip. Um, in terms of, um, like, just, I don't know, just dealing with the journey. I, I personally was ready to get off the boat after three weeks, and I don't really want to be spending another three weeks at sea if I can help yeah. it. So um, it was kind of like, well, that was fine as a one-off. That was fine. You know, you yep. put up with anything just, and do, just once. But if you're thinking about, okay, I'm going through the Panama Canal, I have to the Pacific Ocean, which is a bit longer, but not by much, especially if you're stuck at the Galapagos. But then, once we reach the Marquesas, then you've still got another 6,000 miles or maybe about 3,000 miles by that point of ocean to go before you get to, like, New Zealand or Australia. Obviously, lots of islands in the middle, but you're still doing lots of kind of longer passages. Um, in short, there's a lot of sailing to be done, which is fine. Uh, <clears throat> but then you get to New Zealand or Australia or both, and you've still got the Indian Ocean to do, You've still then got the Southern Atlantic uh, Ocean to do, and then you've still got the Northern Atlantic Ocean to do to get back to the UK. So instead of looking at one or two ocean crossings, i.e. doing Atlantic Circuit and doing like two transatlantics, you're now looking at how many that is, like say, I don't know, what was that, five? And you're thinking, do I really want to be doing all of that sailing on this particular boat? Because with most boats, say like we had a Geno or something, you could be like, well, I'll do it, and then if we decide that it's not the right boat for the job, then we can just sell the boat. We'll just sell it in New Zealand, or we'll just sell it in Fiji. But this is such a specialised boat, and it's not very well known outside of the UK. Well, the, the Americans know about it, because it's quite... SJ Yachts are in the American market. Yeah, I know, but it, like, there's not a huge demand for them, even with SJ Yachts. There's not a big demand for Southerlies in the US. Oh, okay. Um, so we would find it really difficult to sell this boat anywhere really but Europe yeah, she's, and she's to not a actually. lesser extent um, the US. Yeah, so it was really, a, it wasn't like, is she capable of doing the Pacific? Because yes, she is. It was really, is this boat the right boat for us to do a circumnavigation? Which the answer was for us. Personally, it was no. We don't want to do I that. think if we were to hurt around, if we were to just go, right, do the world up, 15 months, wallop all the mm -hmm. way around, then yeah, of course, because they just go stop, stop, stop. But if you want to stop somewhere and you're like, right, I want tankage, and a water maker that's high capacity and I want a thousand watts so we can stay somewhere for six months. Yeah, there was a lot of reasons for it. <clears throat> it it's mostly to do with living more remotely mm. and, and that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. could, could this boat circumnavigate? Easily. Yeah. Do we want to circumnavigate in it? No. Yeah. That's the short answer. The old man says it's three in the morning in New Zealand. Wow. Should we go to bed? Stay yes. up, mate. Drink through it. What, what, what are you doing up? <laughs> that's so late. Yes. I was up at three o'clock in the morning last night but that was because of it was like snatching all over the place and the lines yes. were um, anyway so Dexter says great video on the sales the other day thank you Dexter so listen we have got 
some we were someone was talking about upcoming technical Tuesdays. Um, someone on Patreon, the Patreon team, was saying, "What are your favourite pe- uh, pe- uh, technical Tuesday videos?" One we've got coming up is a series that we haven't even started filming yet, really, on sale trim, but we are trying to work really hard with a graphic designer who works in sale making to actually uh, digitize the sales and overlay that on um, on our drone footage so that we can explain to you how sales, you know, how different wind strengths and different wind angles actually change the shape of the sales. If this comes off and it's still in its real inception, I mean, it will be amazing. Yeah, be So really we're really good. excited about that. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, we've got another... Um, all, all the technical videos that are going to be on Catarans, which will be a separate series, we've decided. It's not going to be v- weekly vlogs. It's not going to be technical Tuesdays. It will be something else. So that if you want to see our thoughts on it from kind of having spent four years as liverboards now and sell 20,000 miles, this is what it's going to be. So, yeah. And we'll look at all the big brands. We're going to, you know, we've got all the big ones. There's, you know, just to throw a few, the, the big marks, the Uchimers, the, the Lagoons, the Fontaine Pajos, the... Uh, the lepers, the katanas, those big marks, and then the kind of boutique ones. There's Sea Wind, there's Antares, there's Blada Blada, Nice Now, all those and uh, privilege, s- privilege, of it's course. Not, privilege. not uh, that we can, not we can, not that we can afford. <laughs> That's just like dreaming. <laughs> because there is, you know, we do it. We're, we're set to budget. You know, yeah. don't, we're not, you know, having some crazy boat going. Oh, we're going to give you a free boat. It's, it doesn't work like that. It, it hasn't worked like that for anyone. Let's just put it out there. Um, However, um, it's just going to be a comparative analysis from us, isn't it, on, on what we want. Anyway. Um, Lance says, have I patched anyone up while cruising? Nope, only, only Nick. Um, lots of band-aids. Yes. I'm very good at applying band-aids. Yes. Um, Danuka says, will you be purchasing a drone? Danuka, we have two drones. If you look at our social media somewhere, we put, put a lot, especially on Instagram, a lot of drone footage up. And to answer a question, I think, that you kindly put onto uh, Facebook earlier today, um, we have um, a DJI Mavic Pro and a DJI Spark, both DJIs, because um, the software and the the, the um, interface is about the same. And um, <clears throat> it is actually very, very difficult to film footage of a boat sailing um, with a drone. And not only because you have to launch it and collect it, but the drone... It does. It, it can't get. It cannot get the exposure right of water and the boat. It, you're either it either overexposes the boat or underexposes the water. It's it's it messes things up. We have a series of um, even polarizers and um, neutral density filters for our drone, and we're playing around with those at the moment to try and bring the exposure down. But it takes a lot of work in post production to actually get workable shots with a, a drone. So yeah, and it wasn't just us being like you know. Shambolic. We we spoke extensively to Jason um, from Gone with the Winds about this, who's a professional <clears throat> photographer. If anyone knows how to kind of get a decent shot, it's him. And um, yeah, he he was saying how difficult it was for them as well. And their drone shots are amazing. So he's obviously doing it right, but it's uh, it's hard. Um, there's a couple of questions there that I wanted to ask, but you ask, but you've just scrolled down. So my darling girl. <sighs> oh, uh, someone asked. I can't remember your name. Sorry. Um, whether we're getting a. Uh, whether we're getting a, a, ch- a charter configuration, like a full cabin configuration, or a owner's version, we would definitely, this, this is a red line, definitely an owner's version. Yes. We don't need full cabins. No, we do not. You know, we're not going to... I also want to be able to run <laughs> naked to the bathroom from the bed. I want to be able to leap off the bed <laughs> like the beginning of Hong Kong Fui and kind of leap into the bathroom. And I can't do that with four cabins. We could, because each they all have their own little bathroom. But no, we want like a, a bigger bathroom or... Yeah, and um, we want our own hull. We want privacy. We want to give you know the other hull over to guests if need be. So yeah, no, we're we're after an owner's. And version. if someone says smash sure. that like button, someone obviously loves Peter McKinnon. So <laughs> smash that like button, hit that subscribe button. Or what does Peter McKinnon say? If you haven't liked it, just like it. <laughs> um, so let's have a little shifty. Hit that like button. Thank you. Your How about Sea Wings twelve sixty? Asks Bubba Gale. Bubble sea wind do some beautiful looking cats inside. We're gonna go and look at sea wind. Um, it, it's literally price. There, there is, um, yeah. It's just gonna come down to the, a, 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 you know, uh, what we can afford. Um, we will happily look at new and used and find something that's perfect for us. It's got a, 
it is not going to be used solely for pootling around uh, the BVI's in the Caribbean. Not that there's anything wrong with that, because really, that's where I intend to spend my dotage, pootling around Hope Town, you know, eating cake, drinking beer, and like, screaming at the youngsters. Yes, that, that will be happening in our future at some point, but not yet. Um, in my opinion, the Seawind uh, 1260 is uh, not really a liveaboard cruiser. It's like, especially if you're doing kind of long distance sailing, it's more of a kind of weekender or like for coastal cruising. Um, and the, uh, I think it's about 41 foot, 42 foot, and the 50 foot version, which I think it's a 1600, uh, is lovely, but I mean, 50 foot is a big caravan. Yeah, right. it's going to be mid 40s. So we're looking at something smaller than that. Yeah, it's, going to, it's mid 40s, which is a, a, you know, it's a compromise between waterline speed, livable space, you know, manageability, cost, mooring cost, ongoing cost, yada, yada, yada. That, and that's where we are with this. The sweet, the sweet spot for us, which is a couple with guests, with, you know, people coming on board to either sail with us, you know, that we know or that we mm. want us to know. Um, <laughs> yeah, Nick it, says, um, hey, guys, uh, thanks. My notification thingy went off and I saw that you guys were... Live and here I am. Woohoo! Nice system, to see you, sir. System works. That's excellent. There you go. Uh, um, Peter says, uh, "Did the winds convince you on the merits of composting toilets?" I was. I think you once compared them to having a goat. Is that something you said? I don't know. <laughs> um, look, I, the composting toilet thing I think is fantastic, but I also think that it is. I, I'm not sure that I'd want to go down that road. Um, never say never. It's not. It's not something we know much about yet. So, look, put it this way: if we when we buy a boat, when we buy our next boat, um, we're not looking at, I mean, never say never, but at this point in our planning, we're not thinking of doing like a big refit. We just want to buy something that is relatively ready to sell away. So I'm not thinking that we're going to be in a position where we're going to be like ripping out heads and putting composting toilets in. However, if we ever do need to replace one of the like actual kind of manual pump, what do you call it? Like just a normal toilet, just a pump toilet then um, we might think about it, but it's something that we don't know much about yet. I think that we'll there's out. pros and cons, definitely. Um, Paul Evans says, Med Bay Southerly 38 should be around 260, depending on condition, gear, and taxation. That is exactly, exactly the right figure. Congratulations. Paul, yeah. did you look at... Did you look at your video yet? Well, <laughs> so yeah, so that's, that's where we are. So tax paid, uh, you know, good nick, blah, blah, blah. That's what Lots I'm of gear, highly yeah. safe. Um... Circumnavigation says leopard front cockpit is self. Hang on a minute, is self. See, uh, you do the same thing. I Every know. time you scroll down with the comments, it um like. All right, takes I know. You, I know. No, I'm telling everyone else. Back. Oh, yes. Uh, it, it takes you down to the bottom. It says leopard front cockpit is self training in under 45 seconds. Not really a safety issue, I'd say. I actually, it's not just about that cockpit, and I doubt very much whether it's, it will drain in 45 seconds. I, I really don't think it will. And realistically speaking, if you are in a heavy sea and you've got a swell period of, you know, 15, 20 seconds, you could be filling that up every 15, 20 seconds. The other thing is it's to do with weight distribution. You know, if you look to, you know, I'm not championing Uchimers, they have very, very long keels and there's not a lot of fiberglass forward of the mast. So, the, you know, the more performance oriented your catamaran... Oh, keels? Do you mean... Keels. Okay. So if you look at basically the Ultramares, I've got these really long keels forward of the mast. About, like the bow part, the, the tramplings, they've got big... Yeah, there's the hull, sorry, the hull, sorry, baby, yeah, the hulls, sorry. <laughs> Okay. Reset. Um, they've, so got, they've got um, a lot of, boards, don't they? Yes, but they've also got a lot of hull forward yes. of the mast. As soon as you start putting fiberglass forward of the mast and you start making very small trampolines because you've got fiberglass there, you're putting weight forward, you're adding weight, and you're reducing performance. I'm, I'm not knocking leopards because there's a lot of people that we know that have got really lovely leopards. I'm just not sure. The main, uh, the, the second point with the leopards, for me personally, are twofold. One, I actually think that if we had one of the newer leopards with the forward-facing cockpit, we probably would use it quite a bit because we found that when we were on Curiosity, we were <coughs> sitting on the trampolines or at least like on the foredeck a lot, especially in the evening. It was a really nice place to sit, so I think we'd probably sit there quite a bit. <coughs> but we try now. But I, as Nick said, I'm, I'm not. I can't visualise how that would be <coughs> in like big seas or in really shit conditions I just I can't see that being an advantage 
even if you say, well, you know, it drains. There's a door. Or, there's a door, there's a door. Like, and you know, it's, it can't be good for windage. Like, just having that kind of like. So anyway, um, but also, and you can kind of like get over that, maybe. But one thing you cannot get over is like the aesthetics. And I personally, it's obviously just a personal choice, but I personally am not a fan of the. We, we will look at it, and we. Aesthetics. Okay. Um, we've been onto a couple of leopards. We were invited onto a couple of leopards in the Bahamas, and the owners had a few issues with the, the actual the way the settees were made as well. So we will have a little look at. Um, yeah, apparently the settees weren't comfortable to sit on. <clears throat> um, someone Barney says he's in Afghanistan, um, and I hope uh, you stay safe, my friend. <laughs> Whatever you choose to be doing, let's stay safe. Um, Nick says uh, you could do an SLV and get an Uchimer. Um We could. The thing about Uchimer 45s, and I got this from talking to Mathieu, who is the chap at Uchimer, who is like, I'm not sure what position he has at Uchimer, but he's a very nice man. He's, he's like a salesperson, isn't he? I'm not sure. I think he's more than just a salesperson. Okay. But um, he was saying that the problem with the Uchimer 45 is you can only put 500 kilos of weight onto it as, as it comes out of the factory. Now, once you've added fuel, water, sales... And God knows what else. You can't load the boat before it really starts to affect performance. The thing weighs eight tons. So you can't put a gen set on it. You can't put all these kind of bits onto a boat that I would want for like a liverboard. Ultra 45 goes like stink. Absolutely goes like stink. Amazing boat. Really well built. Really stiff. Kind of like. But again, I think, and even in his words, he said, you want an Ultra to circumnavigate, you need a 51. Or a 50, whatever it is in that one. 51, yeah. Yeah, 50, and then there's a 5X. Yeah, and the 5X is, is a different 50 boat. 50, 5, yeah, anyway. Um, uh, Remy, I think, said, uh, check out Exquisite Yachts. They've, they come fully equipped. Um, yes, they do, and they're beautiful. Have you looked at the Exquisite Yachts yet? No. They're really, they're gorgeous. But, um, again, like, they're 50 foot. It's just way too much, way more catamaran than we need. Yeah, it is. And this is the problem, that a lot of the catamaran manufacturers, especially, like, the... Uh, smaller, more, I guess, boutique uh, manufacturers, they don't have, like, a kind of wide range of options. It's not like the production cats where they have, like, 40 and then a 42 and then a 46 and then a 40. I mean, they've, like, got six or seven different sizes. They just have their one size. They're just their one boat. Exquisite is a good example. And it's 50 foot, you know, and it's like, well, that's lovely. Obviously, there's... Decent profit margin on fifty foot size. That's why they do it, I assume. But for most cruising couples, you don't need fifty foot of catamaran. It's um, so the people their market doesn't need fifty foot, but they're selling them fifty foot. Exactly, we've been living on a forty foot monohull yeah. for four years, and it's enough for us. Yeah. So they could do like a forty six foot or a forty seven foot, but they don't. They do fifty foot, which is just exactly. Big. Um. So yeah. So that's that's about. So what other questions? Peter uh, Pinker is excited about seeing if we buy a cat. Well, do you know what? It always splits the pack, doesn't it? You get some people going, oh, mate, we actually had a message on Patreon the other day saying we're yeah. leaving you because you're buying a thing to mine a cat. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, oh, well, sorry, we're mine a whole sale. So and then that's fine. Fair enough. But, you know, again, you know, we have to be led by what we want to do. And we may still buy a monohull. Exactly. It's like, we're not, you know, we've not kind of made any decision. Um, we just, as I've explained before, we know the monohull market fairly well. We've researched monoholes for years um, and we know exactly, well, I know exactly what monohole I would want and I think Nick probably has a short list as well in his head. Exactly. So, um, yeah, like there's no real need for us to do extensive research on monos because we already know quite a bit already. But catamarans, we're kind of starting at a... a we are starting from scratch. Probably not from scratch. Almost from scratch. Not really from scratch, but we're definitely starting at a different stage, so... Okay, so thank you. Uh, who is this that's just... It's Thank you, Archie. Archie. Thank you, Archie Watson. That's very kind Does of you. Does Archie have a question? He just said, buy some beer. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. So, um, Etiki Boxen, as you now asked about eight or nine political questions um, about different parts of either anti-American questions or... Realistically <laughs> speaking, even if I did agree with you, which I don't think I do, I don't really think that this is a forum for discussing politics. And that's just the way I'm going to be with it. So, you know... Really, all I would say, I mean, now because you've said this, I'm actually going to bore bore the piss out of you for a few minutes 
Um, okay, I don't take it, Sheila. <laughs> as, as I, as I'm, but okay, this is the thing, right? Everyone's got political views. Everyone's got views on politics, on religion, and all sorts of other stuff. The commonality that we all share is sailing and our love of sailing. And this doesn't just come across on the internet. It comes across from like 15 years ago when I was in a yacht club on in, in North Kent. And we all just loved sailing. And we all come from different backgrounds, different walks of life. We have different political affiliations, different religious affiliations. And some of my best friends, uh, defi I define my best friends not by what they think about politics or what they, their religious views are, but how much they are aligned with my and our way of living. So I'm not going to discuss the politics with you. There you go. But there are loads of forums you can discuss politics on. There you go. Um, Peter asks about um, balance catamarans. Um, I'm just trying to, I have researched balance catamarans and there was a reason I think why I thought maybe they wouldn't be suited to us. Now I can't remember what that reason was. <clears throat> so I'm sorry, I can't answer that right now. Danuka K says, if you want a new boat name, I will sell you mine. <laughs> Sell it to us. What is your boat name? Now we want to know what it is. <laughs> you can, well, in all fairness, you can uh, you can name a boat whatever you want. You, you know, you don't own the exclusivity to a boat name, unfortunately. Yeah, no, we can just. That's why there's so many boats called Breeze or what's the other one? Like wind, something. To, it, it's stuff to do with wind. Yeah, there's always there's hundreds of boats, so you can you can name a boat whatever you want. Yeah. There you go. So uh, let's have a little shifty. Leopard fifty is the way to go. Says Randy. Uh, not sure, my friend. She was here to meet my wife again. She always had her soul and sailing when we met in Turks. Oh, hi, Randy. Yeah, of oh, course. Yeah, they turned up with just okay. Yeah, that was that was really um. So ridiculous. we're going to be at Annapolis. We're going to be at the Annapolis boat show, aren't we? Yes. So we've booked our accommodation for Annapolis. So we will be there. So uh, anyone wants convincing uh, to go sailing, if anyone needs a wife, uh, a husband, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, cat, dog, hamster, <laughs> you know, chinchilla. Need convinced to go sailing, come to Annapolis. We will be there. We're going to be there for a long while, actually, because we've got a, this is all part of our research for Ruby Rose 2. So we will be, uh, you know, looking at other catamarans there as well. So uh, I think, yeah, I'm just reading some of the comments about leopards, and some people are like, oh, you have to get a leopard, and others are like, leopards are the worst. And I just think it's interesting how people have very strong feelings. Of people do. And leopards look, are fantastic and they're very, very popular. I think the Leopard 48 is like one of the most popular catamarans ever. You know, it's, it's by far, I think, the most popular leopard that's ever been produced. Um, I mean, there's a reason why they're so popular. And I think that they are great catamarans and they are well built. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, they're built to a price point like all production boats, but they are, they are good. But, um, yeah, as we said, there's just a couple of reasons why our leopards don't suit us. The new suit leopards us. don't yeah. suit us, um, personally, at the moment. The forward facing cockpit isn't something, we've already talked about this, isn't something we're really interested in. And for us personally, the aesthetic that they've gone for isn't our cup of tea either. So The other thing is, I know that these things are all built to, to price points and they're all built uh, for weight saving as well. But the interiors, I, I love the interior of this boat. It feels like a, it's very woody and, you know, it, it feels like a quality boat. And I would rather buy a used boat that is of slightly higher quality inside that's like, rather than something that looks like, like if you look at Nicky and Jason's boat, yeah. which is a leopard, it's a 2005 leopard. The, the joinery in that is really beautiful and it is all sandwiched. So it's veneer sandwich foam or whatever, it's some foam. But it looks nice. The newer leopards, they've got this thing called, what is it called? Alpi, Alpi or something. It's it. It's just, I don't like the look of it. And realistically speaking, you have to kind of be able to live on this thing. Mm. But like Lagoon have gone, but it's interesting actually, because the, the newer production boats have all gone for this like lighter interior, whether it's like a veneer or like wood veneer or plastic veneer or whatever. It's all like quite light. And that's, that's nice. <clears throat> I personally am not a massive fan, but that is certainly very nice looking if that's the look you're after but lagoon have now gone back to um i think they call it like american walnut or something yeah. they've gone back to like this darker veneer which um kind of harks back to more of a like a traditional boaty look which i think is interesting and i think that that, that is obviously in response to feedback they don't just like you know pick something out of a out of a hat and go with mm -hmm. it that you know it's all very carefully thought about um, and yeah, I, I much prefer the newer Lagoon interiors now that they've made that change rather than that like beachy colour that they had before, which I wasn't really keen on. Exactly. 
Robert, thank you so much. Perfect the Ruby yes. Perfect the Ruby Rose lemon cake. I actually do make a very good lemon cake. That was an anomaly. I just want to make everyone very aware of that. <laughs> she does make a very good cake. Um, so other news. While we've got some news for you, um, next week uh, we are relaunching our, our merchandise store. Um, so it's been uh, we're a month behind uh, with the, the store because there were just some issues with the technical kind of getting the stuff put together. Yeah. Thank you very much for Aurelia, who probably was screaming at her own community getting it fixed. But uh, early next week, we would have launched this weekend, but it's Easter, and you're obviously all eating chocolate. <laughs> so um, uh, the new store will be um, the new the new the new store will be up next week, and we'll put all the announcements on social media as well. So that's good. Yes, and uh, Nick and I are, are kind of oh, you can't see mine because I'm out of the frame. But anyway, you, you can see our. We're wearing our new merchandise, so it gives you a bit of a taster of what's um, going to be on the um, on the store. Yep. So, you, uh, ladies, we have a little kind of subtler, subtler, more subtle um, version of our logo, uh, like part down, and Nick uh, is sporting the. Yeah, it will be. It will be. On, it will all be on these. Yes, but I'm just showing people. Okay, sorry. There you go. Yes. Um. There you go. What else are we going to talk about? Um, oh, I thought you were going to... No, we're just talking about it. There's a lot of discuss. Um, See, I can be using some to talk about merchandise. I don't know. I love your loving relationship. Do you have arguments ever? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> like when Nick cuts me off when I'm trying to talk about yeah. our fantastic new merchandise. Okay, well, saying as Kenny's brought it up again. Yeah, so the, the website, the, the, new, the new store will be open next week. And, um, yeah, we've got, we put in some new things and we've got uh, this yeah. sweatshirts, ladies sweatshirts, which yeah. are new. Yeah. And um, we have also got jackets. I really yeah. wanted a jacket, so we've yeah. got jackets, uh, the usual stuff, t-shirts, mm -hmm. hoodies, blah, blah, blah. Okay, really okay. nice, really nice hoodies as well. Yeah. Um, our older hoodies were not as nice as the new ones, so uh, yeah, I was never particularly happy with the older hoodies, but the new ones are really nice. We've both got, they're unisex, so we've both got um, a hoodie. And yeah, the ladies have this other like little kind of uh, crop sweatshirt, I think it's called. Oh, and there's also like um, our boat name or our channel name on the side as well with a little tiny logo so some nice little design features i think so unfortunately this young chap here Eric, you just block him i'm gonna block him he's gonna get uh there you go sorry my friend too much uh too much religious too and much political politics. shit on here my friend uh john um, john thank you very much new boat fund lol Aww. someone actually suggested we should have one tier on patreon that was the cost of our boat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think was actually really good. Whoever, whoever came out there, it was just, it was a very clever, a very clever way of thinking. Yeah. Um, Robert says, um, it's actually a really good question. I've never I mean, asked this before. Any new tech that we're excited about getting on the boat? Yeah, that's an excellent question. I am but looking forward to thank you for whenever asking that. Uh, the new uh, Iridium satellite network goes up so that we can actually get high quality internet from remote locations. That Actually, will be exciting. That is for us. At like a reasonable cost, hopefully, or at yes, least yes, not yes. extortionate. Yes. I am looking for, do you know what I'm looking forward to? A nice machine. Yes, but do you know what else I'm looking forward to? No, no. I'm looking forward to having lithium batteries. Yes. So that we can power lots of electronic ga gadgets, but I, I want an electric stove. Yes. Like, um, I think Dallas have an electric like induction an induction hob, yes. hob and uh oven electric oven as well yeah that's what i want so um, basically some sorry no go on so robert says have you ever considered geno monohulls we have just we were in st carlos la repeat and there was like a big kind of bun fight between geno ds owners and non-geno ds owners they really kind of like are at odds with each other over who's got the better boat look i really all i would say is that I'm not going to... Geno DS is a rip-offs of Sotheby's. They look like Sotheby's. They're just not as well built. So they, they are beautiful boats. Um, yeah, that's that's where we are with this. <laughs> um, but they, they're pretty looking boats. Again, look, it's all fair and well to look at a boat and go, oh, isn't that pretty? And then look at the spec sheet and think, oh, isn't that clever? Or isn't that a nice thing to do? But really, when we go to an app, uh, not an Apple's God, when we go to Grand Mott next week, what I'm going to be doing is going through it with a torch 
and looking at certain things which to me are uh, yardsticks of quality. And they're not going to be things that you think, oh, look at the quality of this work surface. You know, isn't this, yeah, I'm going to be looking like, okay, what is the steering quadrant like? You know, how well, well, you know, what are the welding like? What is the quality of fiberglass like? I'll be looking at the quality of the work surface. Exactly. But there's, so there are things that I, it's, so it's going to not just be, oh, you know, like it's, superficial. it's got a double sink. Yeah. It's oh, gonna, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be, you know, have they put the damn steering on properly? Yeah. You know, is there enough structural integrity in, you know, a rudder system mm. that is going to take huge loads in, in offshore passages? But generally speaking, if the things that you you can see with just like rather looking at rudders, sitting in the saloon, looking around, are well thought out, and, you know, like, for example, there's like rounded corners, and you can see that everything's like been done well, then... I don't think it's an unreasonable assumption to make that things that you can't see are also done well. And, uh, you know, yeah, we've already talked about this. We'll, we'll talk about it more in our, in our boat reviews, but yeah. So Warp Drive 21 says, Discovery, when will they produce a catamaran? They already do. There is a Discovery 55 catamaran. You just Google it. You can already buy a Discovery catamaran. Um, Berlin Aussie says, will you sail with the winds again? Well, apparently we have a standing invitation. Nicky and Jason haven't. Time. And they have an invitation. <laughs> well, they have an inv I, I, we, we will catch up with them again. Yeah, we, they are genuinely lovely people. Yeah, we, we hope to see them again at some point. And yeah, I'd love to sail with them again for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and yeah, I, I, they said on our Q and A, so it's not like a secret or anything that they'll probably um, get to Australia, which will take them probably a couple of years. And uh, then I think they're looking to do some RVing again um, because that's the best way to see Australia rather than by boat. So maybe when they don't have a boat and we do, then we can return the favour. We will do. Yeah. They have a standing invite to come visit. Yeah. Uh, oh, hello, Linda. So Linda's Linda's here. Uh, nice to see her here from Michigan. Um, I think we missed quite a few questions. So listen, if we haven't answered your question yeah, and you're you still question, hanging on, yeah. just answer again. Yeah. So it's hard to see them all. So yeah, apparently DLOS are heading to Europe, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah. We will probably miss them because we're heading probably if we. We're kind of going like, unless they come to Atlantic France, which I encourage them to do. If any of yes. you are like. Delos patrons or have the ear of uh, the crew of Delos, then um, yeah, encourage them to come to Atlantic France because it's amazing. Um, so yes. Robert says, are you open to having a beer with a new owner of Ruby Rose One? Yes, absolutely. Do, do, well, we probably would anyway. We would anyway. We have to show them the boat. I think, you know, <laughs> whoever buys this boat, we will spend a couple of days making sure that they understand all the systems. Because it's not, you know, well, of course it would. So, and that would involve beer. <laughs> Inevitably. Yes. Um, but after the sailing bit. So, yes, we, were, we will be drinking heavily with the new owners of Ruby Rose One. Unless they're... Is it Mormons that don't drink? Anyway. Uh, Most people don't drink these days. Really? Yeah. Do yeah. well, I don't know. I just I remember reading that lots of, um, like, the new generation of people living in England don't drink anymore because they're all, like, there's lots of different ethnic groups. I mean, what are you I mean, doing, like, rubbing your chin as if this is like... Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right, then. Um... Okay, uh, back to some questions. Um, what do you guys think about a larger mana hole versus cap, same price? Yeah, this is a um, yeah. obviously a, a major consideration. Um, so as you say, a mana hole like, but I wouldn't go up to sixty foot, but maybe like fifty to fifty five foot versus a forty five foot cat. That's probably comparable in terms of space and price. Um, yeah, that's that's what we'll be comparing. We'll be going through that that process um, over oh, the coming months. We have literally decided, literally over the last couple of weeks, decided this is the last season we're doing with Ruby Rose One, and we're going to look for a new cat. Oh, sorry, a new boat. There's a Freudian slip. Look for a new boat. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't decided on cat or mono. We're going into it literally with like, okay, well, we've done four years as Liverpool's. We've done 20,000 miles. This is our experience, and we're taking that experience into what we want next. Yeah. Um, knowing what we want to do next. Yeah. And really, all I would say is that if we were, with the amount of experience that we have now, if we were to go back seven years and looked for the boat to do what we were doing, like an Atlantic circuit. Yeah. I'd still buy this boat. Yeah. I, I would. That this is the this is the best forty foot bloody boat on the market. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Anyway. Um. 
<laughs> Paul says they're open to having a beer with anyone. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, Lee says, have you looked at the Ultramare? Yes, we've answered that uh, about 10, 15 minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, and Neil 51 Trimoran. I've You've been on board a Neil. No, I've never been on board one. I, have I, you not? No, I, I remember that someone had a Neil 45 on YouTube and was so unhappy with the build quality. I think that was one disgruntled owner. All I would say is, um, I... I'm not sure whether you get the best of both worlds or the worst of both worlds with it. Yeah, I, I don't think a time rise in our future, but we will be, um, I think the 45 and the 51 are both going to be at the Grand Mop. We'll pick one to uh, review and we'll, we'll check yeah. out and do a review <clears throat> on them. The most interesting man on YouTube says, please consider naming your new boat HMS Victory. No, it's, uh, yes, well, I can see the obvious. Uh, <laughs> I don't actually think you can name a British boat HMS. I think it, I think it has to be SV. I, don't, I think they, they stopped yeah. that in the registration process. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it will be Ruby Rose too. Mm -hmm. uh, Feel it rising says lots of unhappy Neil owners. Yeah, we've heard this. Um, but again, we'll see. So, um, yeah, some, so yeah, so Grand Mott, uh, what did we discuss? We had some things to discuss today. So, first one was Grand Mott. We will be there next week. Anyone's yeah. in the Grand Mott and fancy uh, catch up, we will be there for two days, but we're working our backsides off. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, we have booked for Annapolis. I will be at the October Annapolis Boat Show for. Most of the boat show, yeah. But again, we're working. Uh, number three, the new um, the new merchandise site is launching next week. Yes. Anything else we need to discuss with these beautiful people? If you have any qu last questions before we kind of sign off um, mm. for Easter, let us know, and we'll try and answer those. Um, but yeah, we've got to we, we just again. <clears throat> Uh, Earthstrong says, what would you say is the main thing you're looking to change as far as your new boat? I think the main two things are waterline speed and uh, storage, or rather ability to live off-grid for yes. longer, which probably means like ability to store lots of provisions and make our own electricity and all that kind of stuff, which we do already, but we want to do that to a greater extent. Yes, that, that's exactly what it is. We want to live off-grid. And we, I mean, we, we've successfully lived off-grid on this boat for four weeks. You know, we've crossed the Atlantic, but mm. you know, and it could be done easily. But we want to be more remote. Mm -hmm. um, SC Vallis says, "Where or what booth will you be working at in Annapolis?" We're not working any booth in Annapolis. We're, yeah, no, he we're... doesn't mean working in that sense. He meant working as in like doing our YouTube thing. Oh, in, okay. Yeah, because he said we'll, we'll be working. Oh no, but I mean, so so yeah, of course, uh, we will be um, like filming and filming doing and reviews and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That kind of working. Uh, what else? Looking at my... Okay. Um, I think that's about it. So yeah. oh, thank you everyone for watching, all 370 of you. <laughs> um, if you haven't already liked, then just click the like button. If you don't mind, someone on Facebook today was bitching about YouTubers asking people to like and subscribe. It's part of our thing. It's part of our thing. We have, yeah. we have to. Forget. <laughs> it's just the way um, that it is. All right. And that's about it. Yeah. Um, so listen, happy Easter, whatever you